tonight, WTVP Channel 47 in Peoria. And a big welcome to all of you watching in on WQPT Channel 24 in the Quad Cities as the Quad City Angels take on the Peoria Chiefs here at Minan Field tonight. The Chiefs are out on the field getting their warm-ups in before the start of the game. And setting the fielding for you, the right fielder for the Chiefs is Rafael Palmero. To get a look at Greg Maddox, the starting pitcher. Don Richardson is at center field. Todd Smith is in right. At first, Darcy Walker. At second base, Brian House. The shortstop, Julius McDougal. At third is Bruce Crabb. The catcher tonight, Hector Villanueva, who you saw in our open, was the one of the pitchers used last night. And Greg Maddox, the 11-4 ace of the Peoria Chiefs on the mound. H, you've got the batting order for the Quad Cities. That's right. The Angels are going to lead off with Pete Coachman at uh, the leadoff spot. He's the second baseman. He'll be followed by Ken Grant, who is playing third base. Doug Jennings is in the third position. He's the center fielder. Dante Bichette is the cleanup batter for Quad Cities. He's the right fielder. The designated hitter, remember, this is an American League affiliate, the Quad City Angels. Therefore, the designated hitter is in effect tonight. And he is batting fifth. His name is Tom Alfredson. Terry Jones, the leading hitter on the Quad City Angels, is batting in the sixth position. He is the first baseman. Jeff Manto is out in left field. He'll follow Jones. Eric Pappas is behind the plate. He's batting behind Manto. And Nunez, Dario Nunez. And the pitcher, Dave Martinez. We already told you about Dave Martinez. Two and three record with over a four-point ERA. Financial support of tonight's game is not coming from some corporation, but from you. This is public television, and it's through your donations that we're able to bring programs like baseball to you. Tonight's game is an experiment. We're trying to see what kind of reaction we receive. If you're watching, then call with a pledge, and we receive a strong enough response. Maybe you'll see more local sports in the future. Please call now with a pledge, and you'll become a member of one of the greatest quality networks that brings you everything from drama, comedy, mystery, and even ways to send money. Call WTVP at 676-4747 or WQPT in the Quad Cities at 796-2424. Pete Coachman steps in, the second baseman for Quad Cities, comes in with an average of 281. Ed, let me set the stage from last night. Pete Coachman was a pivotal person in the bench-clearing brawls in the bottom of the fifth inning. First pitch from Greg Maddox. There's a good fastball that goes in there for a called strike. Coachman had been ejected after the first fight in the bottom of the fifth. He was on his way to the clubhouse, which uh, requires him to go by the Chiefs bench. And uh, a few words were exchanged, and he and Hugh Pover uh, exchanged a few um, <laughs> pleasantries. <laughs> pleasantries, I guess, yeah. 0-1 is the count. Maddox works quick. Swung on, ground ball. Brian House has a beat on it. Makes the easy play, and one up. Whoop! Pulled Dar Darcy Walker off the bag with the throw, though, but Walker whipped around with the tag. What looked like an easy play turned out to be difficult and give Darcy Walker some credit for making the play. Here's a replay pitch from Maddox. And you see it bounding out to Brian House. And what looked like a routine play turns into almost a safe runner at first base. But uh, Darcy able to uh, grab the ball and tag out Pete Coachman. Ken Grant, a former chief at bat. Takes a ball outside. Brings up the interesting scenario of the Chiefs being affiliated with the Angels last year and the uh, Quad City Angels franchise with the Cubs. It's flip-flop during the offseason. Ball one pitch. Swung on, fouled back into the parking lot. One and one. Not only did they flip-flop uh, their particular affiliations, the Angels and Cubs, between Quad Cities and Peoria, they happen to have flip-flopped their positions in the standings. Both of these clubs last year were in the bottom of the league. This year... They're one and two in the Southern Division of the Midwest League. We'll tell you more about the Midwest League as the game goes on. Boy, and the Chiefs have made a, a big transition from last year all by themselves. There's a called strike, one and two. They played 98 games. The Chiefs have a record of 56 and 42 and lead the second place Quad City Angels by five and a half games. One, two pitch to Ken Grant. He takes it just low. It's two and two. Last year, after 98 games, the Chiefs were 45 and 53, five and a half games behind first place Springfield. That's an 11 game swing, Ed. I'll tell you, in just a year's time and changing franchises. 2 2 pitch to Ken Grant. At the outside corner for a strike, the first strikeout of the night for Greg Maddox. And it's two up, two down in the top of the first, and center fielder Doug Jennings, a 2 0 7 hitter, is due up. 
Boy, Villanueva set a target on that outside corner, didn't he? You want to mention Villanueva? <laughs> He's in a different position tonight. For those of you that were out to the game last night, Hector Villanueva was the ninth inning pitcher. That's right, the pitcher. He's usually a catcher. He made his pitching debut for the first time since college last night in the ninth inning, and he didn't do too badly. No, struck out the uh, team's leading hitter. Jennings, a left-handed hitter, hits one toward the gap. Going after it is Don Richardson. He won't get it. It's against the wall. On his way to second base is Jennings, and he's in there with a stand-up double. The first hit off Greg Maddox is an extra base variety. A runner in scoring position with two out in right fielder Dante Bichette due up for the Quad City Angels. Here's Bichette, 269 hitter with 10 homers and 53 Dante. RBIs. There's a replay, Ed, as he does hit the gap, and it rolls all the way to the wall. Richardson picks it up and fires it into second base as we have a stand-up double. Chip O'Malley couldn't even catch that one out there on the wall. Dante Bichette, right-handed batter. Switched places from the outfield to catching last night. Takes one low, ball was, one. Was there anybody who didn't switch positions last <laughs> night? <laughs> there were a couple. Ten people were ejected in last night's ball game. The umpires are the same as we had last night. They've switched, though. Dave Buck is behind the plate, and Ed Paddock working the bases. Paddock doing a good job of keeping things in hand last night. A one ball pitch to Bichette. He takes on the outside corner. That's one thing Maddox is able to do, H. He consistently hits the corners no matter whether you're a lefty or a righty, and that's really been his forte. I talked to the Quad City players before the game, and they said uh, that uh, they like Greg Maddox because he comes after them with good pitches, and they like to go after that. Bichette, 1-1 one, one pitch. He takes it just low, below the knees. It's 2-1. Last night in the game, Bichette was 1-5 for five with a single, two RBIs, and a run score. Maddox, 1-1, one one, as we mentioned, against the Angels. The pitch swung on, fly ball to left field. Todd Smith has a beat on it to retire the side. No runs, a hit. The double doesn't is goes wasted as far as Quad Cities is concerned. A man left on base, and after a half inning, Quad City nothing with the Chiefs coming to bat. After half inning of play, nothing, nothing. And they were uh, anticipating him not going the whole distance. Obviously, he just came off a rehab program, and they just want to get uh, five or six good innings out of him, and then uh, they'll go to their bullpen. Both teams with a hit apiece and no runs as we move to the top half of the second inning. It'll be the five, six, and seven spots in the order. Tom Alfredson, Terry Jones, and Jeff Mano, two of those three batters due up to start the second inning for Quad City. Ex-Chiefs Alfredson coming into tonight's game, a batting average of 197. Nine homers and 32 RBIs, though, so he's making the most of the hits that he does get. First pitch from Greg Maddox. Fires it in there low. Last night, Alfredson was three for five, though, with two doubles, an RBI, and a run scored. Talk about a busy night. Ball one pitch, grounder right back over to Bruce Crabb at third base, across the field to make the play. That was a one hopper right over to Bruce Crabb at third, and he was able to come up with it cleanly. One out, and it brings up the first baseman, Terry Jones, and this H has mentioned Jones, the leading hitter. Here's a replay. Albertson um, slashes that one down the third base line, but Crabb was playing him perfectly. Fires across to Darcy Walker, and the first out of the top of the second inning. Jones, 308, leading hitter, one homer, 22 RBIs. Facing Greg Maddox for the first time, and he takes the ball. You get a good shot from our center field camera as we switch to Terry Jones <laughs> of Greg Maddox on the mound, the pitcher for the Peoria Chiefs. Uh, Greg is uh, a six footer, and listen to this, Ed. He, he had the edge over the Chiefs 13 and 7. But they were different franchises then. Well, so. That's true. <laughs> that's true. 3 2, full count. Payoff pitch to Terry Jones, and he takes it for a ball. First walk given up tonight by Greg Maddox. Puts a runner at first, one out. The left fielder, Jeff Manto, due up. Manto is batting 193 with six homers and 19 RBIs. As a team, Quad City is batting 252, Peoria 267. Manto, right-handed batter, facing the right-handed pitcher and Greg Maddox. Everybody playing Manto straight away. 
Maddox going back to the rosin bag, also checking the cleats a little bit. Mine and Field. Peoria, Illinois, when Pete Vanocken took over in this franchise when it was the Angels, really did some work here. That's a ball. You see Dave Buck calling the ball strikes behind the plate. I talked to him before the game, and he said he's not going to call anything or watch anything any differently than he would normally do, uh, despite the, the fight last night. He said uh, <laughs> he'll call them inside or outside or wherever they are. Ground ball goes foul, even as a count one and one. Before the next pitch from Greg Maddox, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is viewer-supported quality television for Central Illinois. WTV, PTV, Peoria, Channel 47. Television worth watching. Ed Hammond of WIRL in Peoria, along with H. Wayne Wilson of WHOI, Channel 19 in Peoria, bringing you the action for Mine and Field tonight. Runner at first, one out, the runner goes. Swung on, ground ball, Crab moving to his left in the infield grass and into the dirt, but a good dig out by Darcy Walker to get the play at first base. And the runner at first, Terry Jones, moves on to second. He was going with the pitch, no chance for the double play there. The ball was lightly hit anyway. They put out goes 5-3. Here's a replay. Terry Jones breaks on this pitch. He uh, no doubt is not trying to steal. He only has two stolen bases on the season. It was no doubt a hit and run. And um, it worked halfway as uh, Terry Jones advanced to second base on the ground out to third base. 236 hitting catcher Eric Pappas at the plate now for Quad City. Three homers, 19 RBIs. Takes a strike right down the pipe. A little bit of a change up on that move by Maddox there. Looked like uh, Pappas was looking for the fastball all the way. Maddox will keep you thinking out there. There's another one. That one missed the strike zone that time. I think we might see the blazer now, H. I think you might be right. 1-1. <laughs> one, one. There it is, and it missed the strike zone. 2-1. and one. You can see Pete Vanakin in this shot. Well, not that shot, but uh, you can see Pete Vanakin working the crowd. He's behind home plate, directly behind home plate. And he likes to work the crowd. Two balls and a strike. That one's right on the outside corner, two and two. Of course, Pete is most responsible for the rejuvenation of this uh, ball club, both in um, its ability to play on the field and the spirit in the stands. If you've never been to Mine and Field, it's an enjoyment. We'll tell you more about last night's enjoyments and then all the fun that's held out here at Mine and Field. 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on and fouled out of play over to the picnic area which is called uh, the cubby hole here at mine and field last year when the angels were the franchise it was called the knockin's new place but now they call it the cubby hole so uh, usually in most days here at mine and field reserved for groups at picnic tables out there its own little concession stand so you don't have to go very far for the food or what have you 2-2, still the count to Eric Pappas. Runner at second, two out. Bo or top of the second. And Villanueva said he may have gone. And Ed Paddock, the base umpire, says no, he didn't. So it's a full count, three and two on Eric Pappas. I want to thank Ed Paddock, too, for, uh, looking at, uh, for talking to us last night. Take another look at this, Ed. This Maddox pitch, Ooh. you call it. <laughs> Chopper right back to the mound. Maddox waits for Darcy Walker to get there, and he makes the play. So it goes 1-3 on the putout. No runs, no hits, a walk, and the man was left stranded. And after an inning and a half here at Minan Field in Peoria, the Chiefs and the Quad City Angels tied nothing-nothing. 